Now, we have a lot of firearms to cover. When I first talked to uh, uh, the folks here at the museum about the presentation, they asked me how many firearms I was going to be talking about. I said probably 30 to 40. They just, I could hear this distinct pause on the end of the line. <laughs> I said, you do have 45 minutes. So, I was able to cut that down to simply 21. So we still have a lot of ground to cover. So, in rapid fire sequence, we'll start. The first one we're going to talk about is the Carabiner 98K. This was a standard military firearm used by Nazi Germany during World War II. This is the ultimate design culmination of Paul Mauser's efforts. It incorporated a tremendous number of his features, the clip loading system, the box magazine system, the uh, very strong bolt, the claw extractor, a lot of different things that were used on this rifle. It was made from 1935 to 1945 by 10 different manufacturers and there were only over 14 million of these produced during that time period, a tremendous number. They were issued to the Air, which is German for Army, the Luftwaffe, which is German for Air Force, and the Kriegsmarine, which is German for Navy. This is a top view of the Car 98K action, and you'll notice several different features of this action. First of all, the bolt, the extractor down on this side of the bolt, you have a front receiver ring, which holds the barrel, a rear receiver ring, the bolt handle, the bolt shroud, and the safety, which is right here. Now, several things that you'll notice here. First of all, some markings. Right up at the front of the front receiver ring is a marking AR. Germany used different codes for different manufacturers to try to throw the allies off as to who was making what. AR was the code for Mauser at the Borgeswald, Germany plant. Then you see the marking 41. That's actually the year that it was manufactured, 1941. Then you'll start seeing some numbers, here, 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 so on and so forth. Those are actually the serial number. Back in 1941 and before that, and really up to 1942, Germany had the luxury, and Germans being Germans, they serial numbered every part on this rifle. Even the action screws were serial numbered. That's amazing. By 1942, they figured out, you know, we really don't have time to be doing this anymore. <laughs> so they started cutting back, taking shortcuts, increasing their production. Now, this area right here is part of the clip loading system, and I'll show you that now. This is what made the Mauser rifle so effective. It had a five round clip this is the clip part. These are the five rounds of ammunition. It fit down into the slot in the rear receiver ring right here. To load the rifle, the soldier would open the bolt, put the clip in the clip slot, place his thumb on top of the cartridges, and simply push the cartridges down into the box magazine. Then all he had to do is close the bolt, and the clip was pushed out of the way. He didn't even have to remove the clip manually. He just pushed the bolt home. So this made for a very rapid and efficient uh, reloading system. Now the Americans actually first ran up against this clip reloading system in the Spanish-American War because the Spanish were some of the first ones to use the Mauser uh, rifle system. And it uh, literally changed the way Americans looked at uh, military firearms. They were using the Craig Jorgensen rifle at the time with black powder. The Spanish were using the new Mauser system, clip loading and smokeless powder, and to say the least, the Americans got taught a lesson. <laughs>